Raw last night was an absolute incredible show, and I've never done a video like this before, and this is the first time I've, I'm ever doing it. But in this video today, I'm going to be doing a WWE Raw review in an action figure setup style. No, I'm not copying Brett Live. I just thought it would be a cool video to do. I love Brett Live week his week in reviews, and I just thought that this was such a good episode of Raw that I just wanted to talk about it in a video. So I just decided let's just do it in an action figure setup style. Brett Live was the first to do it, and I guess, I don't know, he's one of the only figure guys that does Raw and SmackDown reviews. But, I mean, it's not copying. I just thought... I just wanted to talk about Raw, and I literally am a figure channel, so I was like, the best way of doing it would just be with figures. But yeah, man, this Raw was absolutely incredible last night. The best Raw of two hours. Best two-hour Raw, definitely. I think it's one of the best shows of the year, in my opinion. I loved this show last night. Absolutely incredible. So the show kicks off with CM Punk. CM Punk comes out. He says, uh, my whole career, I've never made it to WrestleMania. This time, this year, I'm going to make it to WrestleMania. He, j he names off some um, some ways he can get to WrestleMania. An old Royal Rumble Elimination Chamber, and then he says, "I have a favor up my a few favor up my a few favors up my sleeve," meaning like the whole Paul Heyman thing. Paul Heyman owns on the favor, so I'm guessing Paul Heyman will give Punk something to, at WrestleMania or something to do at WrestleMania. I'm guessing that that's what he mean, meant here. And he basically just um, then pointed at, a re at at nothing, but he was, you know, he was pointing, he was making it out that he was pointing at a WrestleMania sign. You know, it was a metaphor. So he pointed at the Mania sign. He said, can you see it? I can see it. You know, uh, I'm going to WrestleMania this year and nothing can stop me pretty much. Then Zach Rollins came out and... Seth said he's been thinking about Punk a lot. Zed basically was furious and said that Zed said that he wanted to kick his ass. Ever Zed said he should have kicked his ass the night he came back, and that Zed's been thinking about having a match with him, and he's been thinking about him. Punk said, "I haven't thought of you at all. You're old news. You're not on my mind. Um, you're old business. That's what he said. You're not my business anymore." And uh, he said, "This isn't your business." Uh, last year it was different. You had a title at WrestleMania. This year I couldn't care about you. And then Zet said, um, I'm going to make it your business pretty much. Then they got into a brawl. Jay Uso, Jay Uso and Sami Zayn broke up the brawl because as Punk was walking out, he was seen with Jay and Sami. Jay and Sami break up the, bar, the brawl. Then Zet says, am I your business now? Which was sick. It was very good. Then we got a promo between Sami Zayn and Zeth Rollins, which led to the main event, which we're going to talk about later. But uh, in the promo with Zeth and Sami, Sami basically, um, Sami was, a, they were both kind of angry with each other. Uh, Zeth was sa was angry with Sami. Um, oh, oh no, this is what actually ended up happening. Sorry, my bad. Zeth said, go run back to Roman, you know. And then um, Sammy said, you shouldn't say that to Jay. You shouldn't say that to Jay because ran, Jay ran away. And he was basically saying, go run back to Roman. Because that was upset that Jay and Roman teamed with Jay and Sammy teamed with Roman. And um, Seth said, you know what? I shouldn't have said that. I can get why I can get why Jay Uso would team with uh, Roman Reigns because he's family. But why you, Sammy? And then Seth just kept listing off, saying that you're gullible. That, like, look what he did to me, uh, or look what he did to you. You know, all these different things. They basically listed it off. And then Sammy said, the old travel chief was your fault because you put a chair in your back, in, in Roman Reigns' back. And um, Zed said, yeah, I know it was my fault, but you also did the same thing. And then they basically just got into a big promo. It was a pretty good promo. And then that ended up being the main event, Zed versus Sammy Zayn, which... We will talk about that later on, but uh, yeah, got to move on to what's next. Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez against Damage Control, EO Sky and Kyrie Sane. Uh, you know, it was just an okay match. It was just very mid. Ended in a brawl. We we're still doing this whole Liv Rhea thing. Uh, Raquel throws Rhea Ripley's eye into the corner of the table. And that's basically how this ended. You know, it's the whole eye thing because she injured her eye. You know, it's kind of... Uh, kind of brought me back to the whole Rey Mysterio and Zet Rollins eye for an eye match kind of thing. But yeah, we're still getting this uh, feud 
where you pinned Liv at War Games. So hopefully we just get this match at Saturday Night Main Event and Rhea Ripley wins, to be honest. I do not want to see this at WrestleMania. Please don't drag this out anymore. Just put this at Saturday Night Main Event. Please, I beg you, WWE. Moving on, I may as well talk about this next. Dakota Kai uh, won a triple trap match against Kiana uh, is it Kiana Chance? Is that the one that was in the match? There's, it's like that tag team, I can't remember. Anyway, she won a match in the Intercontinental Title uh, Championship Tournament for the women's... It's for the, and she advances. She's probably going to win the title, to be honest. The match was actually pretty much a banger. It was Dakota Kai, Kiana Chance, or Kater Card? I can't remember her name. And Shane Baszler. Anyways, the match was good. Dakota Kai wins. Moving on. Uh, good match. Dominic faces go backstage segment with the Judgment Day. So basically, Liv Morgan says to Finn Balor, I thought you were going to stay with away from Damien. He said, yeah, but I changed my mind on that. He said, I couldn't let Damien win a world title since Dominic didn't beat him. And then basically says, when you listen to Finn, the Judgment Day wins. And then JD says, I like that. And basically, Finn hinting at that they keep their goals, they keep the win, you know what I mean? And then basically... Finn Balor says, I'm going to go talk to Adam Pearce about a title match, a world title match. And then um, Pearce, or actually, no, he goes and talks to Gunther. A little backstage segment between Finn and Gunther. Finn Balor basically says, I want a match for the world title, you know, basically asking Gunther for a match. Uh, Finn, D Gunther says, nah, you know what, I'm not really bothered for that. Uh, he's not too bothered for the match. Then it leads to Gunther versus Dominic Mysterio. Gunther versus Dominic Mysterio. Uh, Dominic ends up losing. Gunther ends up winning. That's what ends up happening. Then after the match, Finn Balor attacks Gunther and does three coup de grace to him. And that was just a, a, a good segment. The match with Gunther and, uh, and uh, Gunther and Dominic was really good. Three coup de grace to, to Gunther. Everything fell down. But uh, yeah, and then basically Finn Balor said, do I get my title shot now? And Adam Pearce said, yes, you get your title shot at Gunther at Saturday Night Main Event. And you're also going to be defending the tag titles. He said, I'm going to be talking to you next week about your tag titles. So my prediction is he could be losing. He's going to lose the match against, he's going to lose the match against Gunther because of Damian Priest. And he's going to lose those tag titles because of Damian Priest as well. So yeah, pretty good. R-True ends up picking up a win over Pete Dunne. This was basically over R-True calling Pete Dunne butch. And uh, Pete Dunne lost because people in the crowd were chanting butch. And he was distracted. And then R-True basically rolls him up and picks up the win. This was just okay. It's a new day. Yes, it is. The new day. Everyone's in Kofi Kingston. Turn heel. This was an amazing segment. They had like a bunch of stuff out here. Like a bunch of their accomplishments. I just set up some tag titles, a pancake and a crown. But anyways, then they had like some other things around the ring. Like a bunch of their accomplishments on a picture, some balloons, different things, different things like that. As you guys can see anyways, there it is. But anyways, moving on. The coolest thing that they had set up was the big box of bootios. That's what, that was absolutely sick. They showed a great New Day video package before this anyways. 10 years of like just a bunch of career highlights basically. Which was sad, man, to see. You know, they had one of the greatest runs ever. I was just hectic, but now it's all over, I guess. Anyways, Big E comes back and says, I want to be your manager. And then Kofi and Woods basically say, why only now, Big E? You chose your new life over us. And I'm not going to talk about this whole thing because go and watch it yourself. This was 14 minutes long. I'm not going to do this justice just talking about it. But go watch it. Basically, Big E said he wants to be their manager. And they turned heel and they said, no, why only now, Big E? You should have. Thought of this ages ago. So yeah, um, harsh, absolutely incredible um, segment. Could be one of the segments of the year. New Day storyline. This has definitely been cooking, man. Go check it out yourself though, because I definitely am gonna. I'm not gonna do it justice. But I honestly thought this was cool, and I get what they're saying. Why are they only doing this now? With Big E being their manager, they could have done this ages ago, but I mean, I don't know. It's WWE. It's stupid. I mean, they're ungrateful though. They should just took him as their manager. Anyways, moving on. Two, one last thing. But this was amazing. Go check it out. Sad to see the New Day are done, man. They could have kept these as a tag team and kept them fresh. They could have just kept kept them fresh with Big E in there, you know, being that uh, their manager. But, I mean, maybe they thought that was going to get born eventually. So, I guess, yeah, I guess that's it, you know. Let's excited to see what happens next. A little backstage segment with Ludwig Kaiser and Braun Breaker. Ludwig basically saying uh, that he didn't get pinned, that he wants a match with 
uh, with Braun Breaker for the title. Braun Breaker said, you should get out of the shadow of Gunter because Gunter's career is going down. Time to talk about the main event. So before the match, Jey Uso gets attacked. We don't know who does it. And basically, Sami Zayn is there. And I don't know, or maybe, was Sami Zayn there when he got attacked? I'm, I'm, I'm like 100% sure Sami came over to him. Anyways, then Sami asks Adam Pearce who did it. Like, Jey Uso can't just say, oh, um, Drew McIntyre attacked me. Which was stupid. I hate the way they drew this. But, I mean, you know, it was good in the end. But anyways, it revealed that. Anyways, leads to the main event. Sami Zayn versus Zach Rollins. Sami versus Zach in an absolute banger of a match. Absolute banger of a main event. Sammy ends up losing because he thinks Zet Rollins is the one who attacked Jey Uso and he has a chair in the ring and Zet says what are you doing are you mad what are you doing when you're going so mad and Sammy says you attacked Jey you attacked Jey Zet, Zet says no I didn't uh, Sammy turns out the chair Sammy is distracted because he thinks Zet did it Zet obviously didn't but anyways you get what I mean and Zet ends up picking up the win with a roll up and then we get the return of Drew McIntyre and he wipes out Sami Zayn with a claymore. I do have Sami Zayn set up on the ground as well. So, yeah, there's Sami on the ground. Hard to film, but... There we go. There he is on the ground. Sami laid, laid out. As Drew McIntyre comes back. Drew's back, man. I think he's the one that attacks Sami. Most likely he is. And he's back for blood. Absolutely incredible. Raw, we got one more thing to talk about really quickly, which I forgot to mention. But yeah, Drew's back. Karrion Cross did turn... Uh, Karrion Cross called out the Wyatts next week because what they did to Scarlet. So it's going to be Karrion's group, the Final Testament, versus the Wyatt Six. It's going to be an absolute banger of a match. But why can't they just put the feckin' Wyatt Six on a pay-per-view? Just put them on Saturday Night Main Event already. That was the Raw review. Thank you a lot for watching. I'm going to give the show about it a 9 out of 10, honestly. Best two-hour Raw that they've ever done. My phone figures out.